Evening, guys. First thing to say is I have taken the decision to start writing a second book, but I'm going to do it in chapters. And the thing about them is that they're going to be bite-sized and they're going to be free. Or like, I don't know, I might do 50p or 50 cents. I'm having these interesting great dates and uh, I really want to sort of drill deeper into the whole date story. They'll be like in 12 chapters, three or four dates grouped together. And of course, they'll go into what happens after the first date. Watch out for that. That's going to be an interesting uh, development. So this date was, I mean, the title of this date, I think, is superb because she was the one who declared herself to be a dumb blonde. And of course, any dumb blonde that declares themselves to be a dumb blonde is probably quite witty, quite sharp, quite funny, and quite, and quite you know, quite intelligent. This was a, a Ukrainian student. Um, and the first thing that I thought was, this is ridiculous, she's just way too young for me. She was wafting through the park uh, in a dreamy trance with a mobile on a Sunday afternoon this weekend. Beautiful awesome weather here in Poland. And, uh, you know, I actually saw her from behind. I didn't realise how, I could tell she was fit from behind. I, and I, I thought, and I kind of like her vibe. So I just ran in front of her, not knowing how young she was, university student, 21, 22. So we had a good interaction, got a number. I actually said, what are you doing for uh, this afternoon? Let's grab a coffee. But she wasn't able to because she was going to see some friends. We actually set up a coffee date there and then in the street the next day on the Sunday. It felt like it had been a bubble in the street. It felt like the texting she actually said, no, uh, I can't do that time. And I, th I kind of, the paranoia started, I thought we should probably laying the path to flakedom. And um, so I was actually quite surprised when she turned up. She turned up spot on time as well, interestingly. And she was just, you know, I was like, what am I doing? I felt like whispering into her ear, do you know how old I am? She's Ukrainian, it's the autumn here, she's just started university here. I guess she's 21, 22. So I walked uh, across the street and I decided I'm not going to go to the bar where we met. I'm going to take a risk. And I think this is the key thing I've learned is you've always got to, if you're ever in an state of indecision about whether or not to, you know, what to do next, do the thing that is scariest. And in this instance, the scariest thing was to take her to my seediest joint where I've not been for a while, not since date, whatever it was, 10 or 13 or whatever. So I took her to Claps, the infamous Claps, which on a Sunday afternoon was just derelict, desolate, dark, dingy, like a dungeon, all the Ds you can think of, deftly, <laughs> very creepy. I mean, what a place to take a complete stranger. The, sh the vodka shots are like 50p. The decor is all sex. There's a whole wall full of women's tits that glow in the dark. There's I didn't notice this until halfway through the date. I looked up and there's a massive great paper mache penis that's leaning over us. We ordered a cup of coffee, I ordered a vodka and accidentally he brought two. She declined to drink the vodka. What an interesting rule this is. Persistence, polite persistence. Have you noticed that you ask someone something the first time and they say no and then you politely ask them five minutes later again and they say yes. It's the same thing on the street when you're asking a girl whether she'd like to grab a cup of tea and go on an instant date and she says, no, I've got to be somewhere. Then you just roll off and you carry on talking about something completely different, you know. Uh, and then three minutes later, you, ask, you pose the same question and she says, yes. So this is a similar, similar, similar situation here. I said, go on, go on have, have a shot and warm you up. Okay. And she had a, had a shot of vodka. And that helped to set the tone somehow. Because when I first met her in the street and I tried to pull her in a bit just to sort of be a bit masculine I guess she was like quite I felt her quite hard resistant and we came into this subterranean uh, den of iniquity we you know I felt this was just the wrong thing to do and as we were going there I was actually thinking let's just peel off and go and get a cappuccino at Starbucks play safe no don't play safe take a fucking risk so there we sat at the bar me thinking Oh my God, what am I doing? This girl is young and really hot, but she's, she's not silly young. She's a mature woman young. I mean, she, she's smart. She understands the dynamic. So we got on to uh, dreams. And here's the interesting thing. If you are struggling, go small. Don't go big and talk about the economic crisis or is there life? after death. 
she'd actually inadvertently said that she'd been to a cinema, uh, been to the cinema, and she'd actually seen me there because I'd been to see Thor film. And anyway, I got onto a, a movie called Slumber, which looks quite really interesting. And she didn't know what the word slumber meant, which was a Ukrainian. So I said, "Well, slumber. You know what it means." Of course, she didn't know what it means. I played it out. Uh, not perhaps as long as you as I could. You're always learning this stuff. So I thought, yeah, dreams, good topic. Uh, doesn't speak English, great. I can play the school teacher, and uh, you know it's movies, uh, but it's quite an interesting. It was a an interesting area, and I drilled into the topic of this particular movie, which is a horror movie. It got a little bit dark. I'm excited to talk about her asking her to imagine that she was in a dream state and there was a monkey with a unicorn's horn chasing her. There was a great tree forest monster lolloping after as she, ah, oh, poor maiden, oh, was running for her life, you know. That whole stupid dream story, which was just actually a, a, an elaborate way of, of relaxing her and engaging, which is so critical, you know, you can't start doing the tiger eyes and eye fucking her and getting physical. Particularly when you've met a girl in the street, you need, in a club, different, but you need a conversation. You do need conversation, even if ultimately you can throw it away, which is, I think probably the ultimate level is when you no longer need conversation. That was just a, a good icebreaker. Then uh, we segued into the truth game quite naturally, actually, and we started to talk about sexual topics. So I asked her, and this is where I should credit James Tusk. I met him last week, and he talked a, about one of the truth game questions you can play with a girl is, have you ever kissed a girl? Uh, and I thought, oh, that's quite a nice, interesting question. And she had kissed a girl. And when she was 14, that opened up a whole can of worms, as you can imagine. She asked me the same question. And actually, I remembered that I had a crush as a 12-year-old kid in a all-male boarding school. You know, little footnote there, why I've got problems in, in adult life with, getting, with hitting on girls. So I told her that story as well, which helped to create a connection. And of course, the magical hand was at work. I know some of you guys tease me about my hand work, my, my leg work but I'm, I'm a real uh, slinky, sly pro with the old hand. And what I've also picked up from James Tusk and Kesson Noble, kind of in a vague way, was, um, you know, when you're talking to a girl, you're one of making a point, and then you get physical. Whereas if you're just sort of talking like this, and then you stop and you're silent, and then you put your hand on the leg, well, that's gonna be weird. God, it triggers some emotion and passion in you about a particular topic. And then you reinforce that point by touching. That's great. So I did that a few times, round the back. Uh, I noticed she had this tendency to play with her. She had this long blonde hair and she played with the long blonde hair and I actually took her hair and started playing with it for her. Uh, and I did this thing that I don't usually do, but I, it was a bit kind of dominant, I guess, like a schoolgirl. I took her hand like that and said, oh, you're a pretty cute thing you are. And I actually squashed her face a bit like that. Just for a moment, just for a laugh, when, 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 it, when, when the answers are broken and we were just having a laugh about something. And I suddenly found myself initially having been like, whoa, you know, just, just give up. There's no way you're going to end up escalating with a hot 21, 22 year old Ukrainian girl, mate. That's not going to happen. And you know, I had that feeling when I came out of the date, as I often do, oh, pushing a boulder uphill. Doesn't it always feel like that? Uh, or going on stage and uh, I really would have, I'm, you know, I'm always half hoping that the girl will flake so I can have an easy night, go back and watch some football, you know. So there was this whole kind of blockage there. I remember it was that point that I noticed paper mache penis and so I started pointing out. I even said, do you prefer big tits or little tits? So there was a paper mache woman with her tits showing. And uh, I said, what are your tits like? And she said, I've got little tits and I pulled her coat apart a, a little bit as a kind of a joke. Anyway, it was a, it was a short date. Uh, I determined that it was gonna be short. She had also determined it was gonna be a short date, funnily enough, because she'd spent the afternoon at the cinema and she was actually going, she's actually got to get a, a 7.55 train back to wherever she lives. So we walked back and then it was just magic. I kind of noticed her just doing, touching me a lot, um, pushing me a lot. And I, bumped her once as a joke and leaning into me a lot 
and and then I took her hand. I had actually touched her hands earlier, the old, oh, I think you're a pianist, you've got a great hand span, put your hand up. So I'd created that kind of connect, connectivity. And as I say, we were walking back and I just took her hand and I put my finger through like that. Yeah, which is always cool, isn't it? We were chit-chatting and we were now chatting about what sort of men she likes and she talked about a previous boyfriend and I now found this release, it reminded me of Black Dragon, this Black Dragon dude who says that you can, you know, talk about sexual t- topics, talk about their relationships. And, she, and she'd had a fantastic summer romance with an Irish guy. And I noticed myself um, kind of, at first, react, the, the kind of the knee jerk in me was, oh, he's better than me, what, what you know, um, bastard, jealousy sort of thing. Uh, but she was describing him because of the qualities that he had. And the qualities that he had were very interesting, that, were, that she was attracted by, were very interesting. Firstly, because she said that, uh, like you, she said, I just felt instantly at ease with him and we, were, and we could be physical in a natural way. There was just, this was just gold dust, what she was saying at this point in time, because I was learning about why it was she was attracted to, to why a girl that I'm extremely attracted to is attracted, what attracts her in a guy. She talked about also how he had, when they'd said goodbye at the airport, he'd been confident and, and hadn't spelt anything out. He hadn't said, this is, you know, going to be hard, let's meet each other again and I hope we can see each other again. He'd just given her a hug and, and winked and said, you know, and and she also said, by the way, incidentally, that, that he wasn't shorter than her, uh, taller than her, he was the same height. But she did actually say that she prefers men who are taller than her. So I stood up like this as she said it. So we got to the station and uh, we'd been holding hands. Now, you never never know with, with I mean, we said goodbye and uh, I hugged her. I didn't kiss her on the lips. Not on the, this is now my mini rule on the first date. I mean, you don't know where these are going to go. I, I, I've had great dates in the past, and often the great dates go nowhere. It's the tough ones that go somewhere. Still, uh, I liked her. I think she re- enjoyed the evening, so I think there's you know, reasons to be optimistic. And I guess, you know, in terms of what I've learned from this whole date yesterday was, this is ridiculous. You know, if you listen to my previous... Uh, date update vlog just before this one you'll be thinking you know it's hard work and and yet when you get a date like that it makes it all worthwhile just enjoying the date for its own sake and you know who, who maybe it won't go anywhere but I know that this stuff works and I know that she was interested in and actually the final thing that I'll leave you with is uh, I asked her quite directly, so did you sleep with this guy? And she said, of course. Gents, read between the lines. Girl's not going to volunteer that information unless she feels a little bit of the same feelings towards you. Okay, that's all for now. Strap on your balls. Get out there, get some dates. Try and find cunning ways to take your focus off the result so that you can enjoy the process. Bye for now.